In 19 seasons at Troy, former head coach Jack Berger led the Flying Horses to seven Section 2 titles and a pair of state championships. And the man tabbed to return Troy to the top is a Jack Berger protege. Bob Burns was an assistant at Troy for 12 seasons. When Berger left the program a year ago, Burns took a year off, but he was hired to be Troy's head coach this year. And after a 4-5 and five mark last season, the horses are now 6-0 and oh this year. In fact, with tonight's win over Mahanasin, the Flying Horses locked up the Class A Southeast Division title. Coach Burns cut his celebration short to join us in studio. And so for that, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you having me. At the beginning of the season, a new head coach, team coming off of below 500 season. What were the expectations for you in the club? Well, I mean, as much as the season last year probably wasn't as successful, we came in with the expectation that, you know, we were going to be the team to beat. So... Uh, from the time I got hired till now, I mean, it's been a, a work in progress. I mean, the kids really bought in throughout the winter, through the weight training, a lot of camps we went to, uh, seven on seven leagues. I mean, the kids really bought into what we were doing. I mean, I got a staff put together and then we, we hit the ground running. You opened the season against Queensbury, two time defending Super Bowl champions to get that victory. If there was anybody that was maybe doubting within the program before, I mean, did that kind of maybe seal things that, you know, we've got a chance to do something special? Yeah, as soon as the schedule came out in March and we had known that we were going to play them, I mean, that was that was a lot of our motivating factor throughout mm -hmm. the summer. So anytime things got hard or, you know, the kids were, were grinding to the point where they, you know, were, were questioning some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, we always we had to do was remind them that, you know, we're going to play a team that was 25-1 right. and one the last two years. So, you know, we, get, we need to get ready. What does Troy football mean to you? Because you've been a part of the program for so long. You had a lot of success as an assistant coach. And, and to get this job and have this responsibility to lead the team, what does that mean? It means a lot. I mean, I live in the community. My kids go to school in Troy. Uh, I'm about a mile and a half from the school. So it's, it's been a part of my life for as long as I've had children, too. That's all they know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they enjoy going to games on Friday nights, too. But as far as, as being able to walk out my door and see other kids in the community that I coach and I have coached, mm -hmm. it's, it, it, I mean, it means a lot to my family. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it really does, you know. We've got highlights of tonight's game right here. What was the game plan going in, and were you able to execute exactly as you drew it up? I mean, yeah, we anticipated that the weather might be bad. So, I mean, we, we planned on running the ball significantly. And then when it, when it kind of cleared up this afternoon, uh, we thought we could make some plays in the passing game. So we, we kind of... Uh, got into that a little bit as well. We'll get back to this game and some of your personnel in, in a minute, but uh, you went to Lansingburg High School. Was it strange at first being a part of Troy? It was. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, we really never played when mm -hmm. I was in high school, but mm -hmm. from being from the other side of town, uh, it was a little strange. I mean, I've mm -hmm. known Coach Berger a long time, so mm -hmm. when, I, when I did get over there, uh, even when he wasn't coaching, he'd take the time off. I mean, he's a great guy, so he always mm -hmm. came down and, you know, talked. But uh, it was weird, but, mm -hmm. I mean, I've embraced it. <laughs> Probably don't have enough time to get into everything that you learned from Coach Berger, but if you could pick out one or two things that, that really stick with you. Yeah, I mean, just the way he structures things. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's as far as his practice plans and things like mm -hmm. that, I, I emulate a lot of the things that I mm -hmm. learned from him. Mm -hmm. I mean, crossing every T, dotting every I, that's mm -hmm. just that's the way he is. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I've probably changed a few things here and there, but a lot of the stuff I learned is because mm -hmm. of him. We've got a lot of great playmakers on the team this year. One of them is John Germanario. He wasn't a part of your team last year, but uh, now playing quarterback is doing some fantastic things. And to talk about John and what he means to this program, we'll go over to Brittany Devane, who was at the game tonight. Well, Kelly, last year, Troy Athletic Hall of Famer Joe Germanario did something he never thought he'd do, send his three sons to LaSalle. The Germanario family was sorely missed during last year's Flying Horses campaign, but now they're back. Quarterback John helped lead the JV squad to an undefeated season and Super Bowl win as a freshman, and now as a junior, he's falling right back into stride. While the decision to leave Troy last year was a hard one, the choice to come back was easy. My whole family went to Troy High. I'm a graduate of Troy High. You know, we bleed purple and uh, gold, and uh, we're here because we love it. I got to tell you, Bobby Burns, you know, he came, came from a good cloth, obviously, with Coach Berg and everybody else. But I'll tell you, he's a great coach. He's a great communicator. The kids love him, and he's a great leader, and that's why we're where we're at. People don't want to look at that or take a peek at that, but the truth be told, it's all about coaching at the high school level, and he's doing a great, great job with Sammy, Jimmy Canfield, Mike Grosso. They're all a great, great unit. 
And as I mentioned, John is picking up right where he left off for passing touchdowns tonight in Troy's victory. Kelly, coach. All right, thanks so much, Brittany. When did you know that John was going to come back and be a part of this team? The day I got the job. I yeah, mean, really. I mean, mm -hmm. well, he he. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I I have a close knit relationship with him and his family, mm -hmm. and I coach his older brother, and mm -hmm. we're close. So, I mean, when when he when he had heard that I was coming back, I yeah. think I think they they anticipated that uh, you know they were going to come back as well. So, and it was a. It was a big addition. No yeah, absolutely. It. What has it meant to the team to have him? Oh, it's 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 been tremendous throughout. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's a, mm -hmm. he's the hardest worker. I mean, mm -hmm. he's you tell him to get there at a certain time. He's there a half an hour early. He stays a half an hour late. I mean, yeah. he's he's the kind of kid you want to coach. He really is. And uh, Bob Burns, John Germanero, and the rest of the Flying Horses off to now a six and zero start the season, ranked fifth in the state. They play at Nisku next week. A chance to finish the regular season undefeated, and then sectionals after that. Coach, best of luck and thanks for being here. Thank you.